Welcome back to Hidden Parts of the Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Monet, and today's episode is going to be off the hook. It is dedicated to the holidays, the Christmas holiday, and I am excited even more so because I have my mini-me, Kayla Rashawn, who's joining us today. Christmas for our family is really, really special. It's special for me because of the memories that I have as a young girl with my family, but more importantly, my grandmother, who is no longer with us. Holidays were so special to her, which makes them really special to me. Uh, I remember as a little girl um, believing in Santa Claus until I was probably 11. My younger brother had to tell me (laughs) that there was no Santa Claus. In fact, he found where my mother hid our toys. And he forced me to go in that closet. He forced me, Mommy, to go in that closet and look at all the things that you bought for us. So I hope there's no little children listening. But that was the day that I found out that there was really no (laughs) Santa Claus. (laughs) But anyway, you know, it's still a really, really good time together with your family, with your loved ones, um, you know, just going out, running here, running there, trying to find that perfect gift. Kayla, what do you think about Christmas and how do you feel about it from a little one on up to present? Christmas was lit. (laughs) (laughs) Being an only child, it was lit. But I do remember one specific Christmas I was bad that year. <laughs> that year I was bad. It was the year that the um the Wii's came out. Oh, and I wanted that Wii so bad. But with poor cards, you know, the administration, <laughs> administration, they know what they're doing because they could have waited till after the new year to give out report cards and stuff. But report cards came out like right before Christmas. And I wanted that Wii so bad. And you got me the Wii. Let me open it up for Christmas. But then let me play it until I got my grades together. <laughs> and I was like, it literally sat on the table in the living room for months. I don't think Christmas was, I didn't get to open it until like close to my birthday. <laughs> Which like, is in March. <laughs> it was like, she got it for me. I was so excited. But like, I, I was like, dang. Was I that petty? Did I put it under the tree and everything? Yes, mommy, you literally wrapped it up. And it was like, but you're not playing it because... Oh, yeah. the, the, and I'm like, dang, I really got to get my stuff together. I got this Wii. All the kids going back to school, they're like, yeah, I got a Wii. It's so cool. I'm like, I got a Wii too. But I ain't. <laughs> it was crazy. No, but um, Christmas was fun. I, I, I remember, I like when we um used to bake the cookies for Santa Claus. I don't remember when... I found out he wasn't real, though. You don't? Yeah. I don't remember, like, what age. Oh, okay. I do remember having speculations one time when we were staying at the house um, on um, 40 when Angel spent that Christmas with us. Mm-hmm. I remember we was trying to kept trying to run downstairs to see what y'all was doing, but I don't know when it was, like, confirmed. Like, mm. no, nah, he is not real. I for surely <laughs> thought you knew. No, I don't remember. What I don't even think we confirmed. had the conversation though, did we? Mm, I don't think so, cause it's just like, mm, thanks, mom. One year it just went from, thanks, Santa, to oh, thanks, mommy. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know. I don't remember what age it was, but it was cool. Mm. I, mm. So do you remember, like after Thanksgiving, every Thanksgiving you would spend the night with auntie? Because I I told you that I had to take the the your list to to the North Pole. No, 
Yeah, so on Black <laughs> Friday, I would do all of your Christmas shopping, or at least most of it. I'll be out there with all those people, mm. sending all those lines, trying to get Christmas gifts <laughs> on Black Friday, y'all. It'd be cold. Fighting over. Fighting over Nintendo's, the <laughs> whatever it was, the hottest thing on the list. But Thanksgiving, you would spend the night with Auntie, and I would be up. Two in the morning, standing in somebody's line. Mm, mm, mm. And I think one year, you just had to have, um, what was that pink thing? Was It was a, a video now? Yeah. <laughs> a video now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I went through so much. And she played for, probably played with it for about two weeks. And it cost a lot of money back then. I think it was probably like 150 which was a lot to a single parent, because I was at the time. But... Two weeks. Two weeks. I mean, something else probably came out and I was a kid. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. You still have it, though. I do, because I think it's going to be a collector's item. Yeah. Just like those other dolls that I have. I she did not play with dolls. What about dolls? <laughs> I, <laughs> I did not like dolls. And I was always gifted them because I was a little girl. So, I mean, what else do you get a little girl? But I looked at it like, oh. Thank you so much. And you... I have all those dolls. <laughs> but I did never opened a doll box ever. I don't I <laughs> I did not they were creepy to me. I don't know. <laughs> I, the only time I remember playing with dolls is when I was at Aunt Tina's house because Aunt Tina had this bag of like dolls. It it wasn't much to do at Aunt Tina's house. So <laughs> you had to like <laughs> Figure out something. So that's the only time I well, really Well, you did use those dolls when you played school, though. Yeah. Because I needed somebody to yell at. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of which, this is changing the subject. But, yeah, she was not a horrible child. <laughs> she really wasn't. But she got into some trouble. But the trouble I had was punishing her. So I remember <laughs> one summer, she did something in school. And... I took everything out of your room. You remember? And it was so hot. I was like, I can't take the fan. So I was like, just go in your room, stay in your room until I say come out. And she starts singing in the fan. She played Beyonce. So she's turned the fan on. She's standing in front of the fan singing. I'm like, I can't punish her by taking the fan. She would die. I was like, I can't even get to this kid. So you were in punishment but still having fun yeah well you know i think as an only child you sort of are used to entertaining yourself anyway mm. so like i only had a sibling and that was after i was already 12 13 so half of the growing up school stage and so i grew up an only child and i only had that sibling every other weekend <laughs> so it was really just like and only child, so you get used to entertaining yourself because it's only you. So you gotta <laughs> make your own fun. You did that. I was in there yelling at imaginary kids, playing school, singing in the fan. I was doing anything. <laughs> do you remember Khalifa? I do not. That was your imaginary friend. Why was her name Khalifa? That's a good question. <laughs> that is a good question. I don't know. I don't remember. Khalifa. Why? Maybe I wanted it to be like Kayla, sort of, but why was I it I don't mean no disrespect if there's any Khalifas out there, but that name was horrible. I don't even know where you came up with it. It's horrible. <laughs> I do remember uh, Stephanie, Stephanie Braxton. That was my first alter ego, honey. <laughs> I had to, <laughs> in Spanish class, Kayla wasn't a Spanish name, so I had to pick a Spanish name, and Stephanie was the one I picked. Yes, and you came home and you said, why didn't you name me Stephanie? <laughs> I don't like Kayla. I'm Stephanie now. But don't you think that kind of would have been lit, Stephanie Stevens? Yeah, but Kayla, Kayla Stevens is bad. It is. It's nice, but I'm just saying. I was like, at that age, I was like, that's kind of cool. S squared, like Shawnee Stevens. Stephanie yeah. That would have been mm -hmm. lit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would have been cool. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but that was my first alter ego. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Stephanie. <laughs> well, I'm super fly now. Oh, yeah, still with an S. <laughs> and you are super fly. <laughs> so, Christmas. Like, when did you 
come downstairs? Did you wait for me to go to sleep or did you? I didn't, I, once I was asleep on like Christmas Eve, I was asleep. I didn't like wake up until the next morning, crack of dawn, and I woke you up. Mm -hmm. I like, <laughs> <laughs> hello, I know you probably just went to sleep, but <laughs> the time says Christmas, <laughs> it's time to go. <laughs> Do you look forward to doing stuff like that with your own family when you have one? Yeah. I feel like I'm going to experience some anxiety, though, because it seems like a lot of work. Like, it is a lot of work. It seems like a lot. Like, having with friends who have, like, kids now and seeing, like, what they go through, it's like, mm, this is a lot. It makes me want to hold up a little longer. Oh, okay. <laughs> but do you... Thinking of all of the work involved, do mm -hmm. you appreciate it? Like oh. as a kid, as a kid, you didn't have a clue, but right. you wake up and it's all of this magic. Yeah. And it was just like, could you catch your breath? Like the memories surrounding all of that. Yeah. Did you feel like it was worth it? It was definitely. All of the work us yes. parents go through to For make sure. it. Oh, okay, good. Ooh, <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. No. It is it fun is creating the vibe. It is fun. Yeah. And it's probably rewarding just to see, like, your children's, like, bright faces and mm -hmm. smiles when they open up, like, the gifts that they, like, oh, my gosh, I wanted this. That it, like, it's probably rewarding to see that, too, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, boy. But it is hard work. Rapping and then giving Santa all of the credit. Yeah. It's hard work. But it's worth it. It's worth it. Celebrating Christmas or any holidays is really about relationships. You got to have a relationship first anyway to want to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Christmas is the day that we as Christians chose to celebrate the birth of Christ. So it's all about love. And without relationships, there's really no love. If you don't have relationships that you have love within those relationships, it's all for naught. So um, I consider myself really, really fortunate. Um, there were times where I was living paycheck to paycheck and I couldn't afford to buy anything until like my payday would hit right before Christmas. So I'd be running around making sure that you would have stuff. and. I still found myself fortunate because there are some families that either don't have that kind of love for someone so much that they would be willing to do that, or that they're just not fortunate enough to have the extra income. You know, do you do you have that experience? Like, did you have any friends or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, so like growing up, I definitely notice the difference in like the excitement of leading up to like Christmas break versus like the kids who did come from families who were able to and then those kids who knew Christmas wasn't going to be all that the kids who had to you know sort of grow up a little faster because they didn't have that you know their parents didn't have the means so I definitely noticed the difference and that I was blessed with knowing Santa and you know, all of those things. So I definitely was able to see the difference. And then, of course, coming back to school, you know, you're getting fresh gear and stuff like that. And you see the kids who got new coats and new kicks and then kids who are still, mm -hmm. you know, rocking things because their parents weren't able to afford it. But I definitely was able to see the difference. But I'm sorry, I'm switching lanes. <laughs> <laughs> but what I did know notice I was just talking to my dad about it the other day is like I never knew even if we like were struggling I could never tell like ever like in middle school I remember specifically when the John Hopkins thing happened mm -hmm. I did not know that you didn't have no job <laughs> I was going to school coming home you weren't home it was like regular programming like and then you coming home like you just came home from work like I did not know and you know I love hot dogs and beans so we was eating that I thought it was just because I wanted it like <laughs> I, 
I had no idea mm-hmm. ever. So I was like, I know that I was blessed or that I am blessed because I am. I just knew that like as an adult looking back at that and knowing the things that I know now, it's like, yo, I was really blessed because I had no idea. I still was getting new clothes, new shoes. I still was kept up. I still was eating good. I could go home and turn on my SpongeBob. My flip phone was <laughs> ring ding dinging. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I had no idea. Like, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely another episode um, that I could have to talk about the things we do to protect our children. Cause like, because you had no idea. Not. But back to Christmas, your situation was really unique. And It's important that I hear your feedback on this because you were so blessed that um, your dad and I had divorced, but we flip-flopped Christmases. Do you remember that? So you would have Christmas with me and then Christmas over at his house, but I would still be there, you know, Mm -hmm. but how was that for you? I, I, I remember one specific Christmas with my dad. That Christmas was lit. I had like... It was lit. It was at um that house on um in Gilmore. Okay. Um, and he had like took me in the basement. The whole entire basement was like filled with like all kinds of stuff. And I think you guys like collaborated because I didn't have like one at your house. One it was like the whole entire basement though. And that basement was a nice size, like the size of this room. It was just like filled with stuff. I was in that basement playing for days. <laughs> like, where Kayla? She in the basement. Mm-hmm. It was like, I I remember that one was that one was lit. Yeah. So do you think it's important for families that may be separate it's to, to share it? Important. I've seen in like some scenarios where like the children or the child will have Christmas at mom's in the morning and then the dad will come get them and have Christmas at dad in the afternoon. I've seen where they collaborate and like come to one house and do it together. But I definitely think it's important. I think children are supposed to have both of their parents, like especially around the holidays and things like that. I think that that is important and to still do, you know, some something together as a family because you are, even though you're not, you know, together, you're still a family Mm -hmm. and you as parents are still obligated to raise that child together. Mm -hmm. So you have to, I I think that that's important. And I had that. Yeah. And you also bring up a good point because regardless of the situation, together or not, if you bring a child into the world, it's a family. Yeah. And just because the adults can't seem to make it work, that little person still watching. Yeah, because I think of it like, you know, you consider your really close friends your family. Mm -hmm. So just because it didn't, you know, work out in that aspect, now you guys are co-parents and that's still family. Mm -hmm. Friends, like you and my dad are friends Mm -hmm. now. So yeah, like we're best of friends now. Yes, I I think that that's important. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. All right. I think for me, it's very important because you're always watching. The kid is always watching, right? And stuff break down every day. We weren't the first to get divorced and now we weren't the last people. We will not be the last people to get divorced. But in the, at the end of the day, that little person, you in this instance, mm-hmm. is watching. And I think it's important that you, know, you check your feelings at the door and realize that you have... Um, responsibility, not only for the moment, but the future. So that if you see something that didn't work healthy, you get an idea. Right. Like, so did you notice like, or did you draw any conclusions? No. And it's just, it's funny now because my dad and I'll hear you guys, y'all will talk about times when y'all were not like at the best of like spaces, but I never could gauge that Mm -hmm. like as a child it's important to see because you have to be like a united front Mm -hmm. when it's when it's raising when you're raising a child and you gotta seem like like it has to be that i i still saw love between you two and that was important because it's like you know i could tell that you guys 
still cared for each other. Like there was still a certain respect that you guys gave each other that I saw every time, you know, you had guys interacted, whether it was pickups, drop offs, birthdays, or, you know, things like that. And that's important to see because it, as a child, because you're with your, well, I was with my mom majority of the time, because there are situations where, you know, dad has the child majority of the time, but I was with my mom majority of the time. So in certain instances, and I have seen that too, if you weren't, or you guys didn't present like you guys were always good, then the child watching that now has perceived things about father. And I was like, well, I don't want to go over dad's house because he, this, that, and the third to my mother. And, and because you're the majority parent, it's like, well, organically you side with that. So like, it was never anything like that. And I think that's because I have seen that. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen that too, where it's like, nah, I don't mess with my dad because he did did this and did mm -hmm. that, and I'm like, I I love my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does he call me baby mama sometimes? What he, he call, call you? He call you Mudro. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He cut a thousand names. So <laughs> he's a goofy somebody. <laughs> my father. <laughs> he, he is really goofy. No, but I know that. He just watching as an adult, like your conversations, he calls you more than he calls me. <laughs> like, seriously. And you guys have a, a really great friendship. Mm -hmm. And I like see that. I saw it as a child, but like now as an adult with more like information and like knowing the dynamic of the entire relationship, you guys are really, really close. And he, you guys call each other, talk about. Your daughter, his daughter, whose ever daughter I am that day. <laughs> and, and, and you guys are just, it, it matters. And it's small, but it's big because it weighs on how, how I was raised and like my character development and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So I know the focus of this episode is about the holidays, but... I'm going to stick on relationships for a minute because it's so important and they transcend actually, you know, that word love is deep when you talk about parenting, but you have relationships with your friends, coworkers, you even have relationships with strangers, um, whether you know it or not, but it's important. And sometimes you don't realize when you're in a situation that other people have it worse. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's, I don't know, I only want to imagine what worse could be because my worst was probably somebody's picnic, <laughs> you know, considering the way life is set up. But um, in the end, it's all important because people suffer inside. You know, it could be a relationship where a father can't see his children. And as much as he's tried, the mother is just not allowing him to spend time, not only on Christmas, but period, you know, to spend time with his children. And it could be flip, could be the mother trying to spend time as well. But um, I think about situations like that and also think about people that I may encounter at work who don't have family, don't have children, can't have children, yeah. you know, and they can't experience it. So... Um, Mental health over the holidays is something that we all should be mindful of yeah. um, because you can only assume what a person's going through. You can't look at it and say, you know, life is just so wonderful because you never know because we all look good on the outside. Yeah, they, they that's that uh, seasonal depression thing mm. that they that they that it's called when around the holidays or the colder months people just seem down loss of family members you know around the holidays holidays are always different when you lose someone who is like close to the family like for instance when nana passed away the dynamic from when nana was here as far as holidays and things like that to after i definitely can tell the difference like it's still fun and family but it's different so, you know, people do experience, like, sadness around those times because it's like, 
I miss when it used to be like this. It's like bittersweet feelings mm -hmm. because you're happy that you get to spend time with your family, your loved ones, but it's also like it's not hitting the same as it used to. I man. know, because I do miss Nana. Those Christmases were wonderful. Those holidays, period, were wonderful. I don't remember what holiday it was, but as a kid, I used to just be laughing at y'all, man. <laughs> I used to just be laughing at y'all. I don't know what holiday it was at Nana House that one time where the fireworks was going off outside and somebody knocked on the door and somebody like, hit the deck! <laughs> and I'm... <laughs> And me and, and me and Winston hiding under, uh, we couldn't pick a hiding spot. We was under the table. And then we went behind the refrigerator. Then we just in Nana. She in there. No, there. what you're talking about. It was New Year's Eve. Oh, my and goodness. My grandmother lived in the hood. <laughs> and 12 o'clock came and it's pop, pop, pop. Guns Powers everywhere. <laughs> Hit the deck, and all I remember is Nana. Everybody is under the table. Nana sitting in her chair, hiding behind a fireplace like this. <laughs> it's like Nana, you didn't even try to move. Like, what if somebody really was trying to come in here? And then what made it even worse? The fireworks are going off. Somebody yelled. Somebody. It was you knocking on the door. Yes, it was. You came from somewhere, and you knocking on the door, and somebody yelling, "Hit the deck." And then they're going to go and open the door. No, they didn't open the somebody door. Somebody did open the door. Finally. From like behind. Like they hide and like <laughs> they ain't know somebody opened the door. I'm like, why would you let them in? If we think <laughs> so if we think we're at harm or someone's trying to cause harm to us because it's popping and the yelling hit the deck, why would we open the door? Because it was me out there fussing. Like I could get hurt. Let me in. Because <laughs> y'all left me for dead, for real. They did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm banging on the door. Let no, me in. no, seriously, that was hilarious, and we laughed about that for a couple of, couple of hours. You know what? Next holiday, I'm gonna randomly just yell it and see <laughs> what they say. I'll be like, hit the deck, Miss it. No, <laughs> no, but really, memories, memories like that. Although um, Nana has passed on yeah. and other people may have experienced loss, mm -hmm. memories kind of keep you going. Yeah. And that's really important. For sure. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely does keep you going. Mm -hmm. That one was... We had a lot of memories. That one was down for the books, though. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell my kids about that story. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mm -hmm. be like... <laughs> yeah. We have, we have some good memories. We do have some good ones. And your 21st birthday... Oh, the twenty first birthday. <laughs> That's why all my friends think my mama got money. What? <laughs> because my twenty first birthday, they think you rich. In that dollar bill, it says, "In God we trust." <laughs> and I do. They think mama is loaded because I went to Jamaica for my twenty first birthday. I was a junior in college, and spring break fell like a couple days after my birthday every year at this at my school that I went to. And we went to Jamaica for my 21st birthday. Mm. And when I say we tore Jamaica up, <laughs> we tore Jamaica up. Only thing I know my mom remembers, she was so worried about me. She's so cute. <laughs> she, was so, she was so worried about me because we went to, you know, when you go to Jamaica, it's an all-inclusive resort, so you don't pay for your drinks, your food. The only thing you pay for is, like, the excursions or, like, the extra things you want to do. But I had a drink in my hand the whole time we were there. I had water before bed. That's about it. <laughs> I had water for bed, but that's about it. I had a time. And she came to the club with us one of those <laughs> nights. <laughs> and I was done. I was, they were doing like a conga line. And I was like rushing, <laughs> trying to get into the conga line. And did a belly flop on the floor. <laughs> she was so drunk. And she's like, that's enough, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> she like got so motherly. She's like. Because she was trying to be cool because, you know, it was my 21st birthday. So she was trying to just let me have my fun. But when I hit that floor, but I got right back up because I was having fun. <laughs> She's like, Kayla, I think that you've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? No. And I went right to the bar and got another drink. <laughs> now, 
we're still on relationships and that part was challenging. So, cause you know, you're always my baby in my eyesight, but mm -hmm. watching you grow up and blossom to be this beautiful woman sitting next to me, I still, you know, have trouble letting that go. Yeah. So when you turned 21 and I saw you drinking and having a good time, falling, you know, yeah, Mother Hen had to step up. But I think it's important to shift gears. And although it's really, really hard to shift gears when your child is now a grown up, it still has to be done. Yeah, I think that so sometimes I'll be like, Ma, I'm an adult. <laughs> like, hello. <laughs> right. And then sometimes I think that the difficulty comes in finding like the balance because you always need your mom. No matter like how old you are, you always need your mom. So even when you're 40 something, you still need to be parented sometimes, but you have to find like, that's where the difficulty comes in. Like finding the balance when to like, let me be an adult and then to be like, Kayla, you need some guidance right now. <laughs> like <laughs> that's like that's like the difficult like trying to figure out and because you know I am your only one so you don't have nobody business to be in but mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's where <laughs> the difficult so come I am not in your business like that. <laughs> this is my camera. <laughs> Mommy you go ahead you be doing the most you be in my business <laughs> you be in my business this world is crazy i know it's crazy but i feel like at what point now i know sometimes i can be a little too free a little like i don't think i'm too trusting but i think that you can you you have the right to have the reservations about me being like too trusting or, you know, but I was sheltered. That's your fault. You did that. But <laughs> so I don't, I always see the good in people. I don't want to look, I never look at anybody and just be like, mm, you're going to do this. You're going to, I never do that. But I think that you are like so, so wary that you don't trust like the things that you have instilled in me sometimes. So it's like, you can let me make decisions and, and do certain things. But I think you just be like, mm-mm, because -mm, my child, she don't know nothing about this, that, and the third. You drop her off in the hood and she going, yeah, love. you gave a stranger your cell phone. I did not give a stranger <laughs> my cell phone. And I grew up in the hood. I went to Thomas Jefferson, dead smack in the middle of Emerson Village with people eating cicadas mm -hmm. and stuff. And then I went to Nana's house in the hood every day after school, played with that ghetto. I mean, I'm sorry. You got to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> played with people in, you know, over there. Winton, for goodness sake, he, <laughs> he was enough. Like, so I know. Yeah, we can't say none of that. <laughs> So I know. <laughs> Can you get us back, Calvin? <laughs> it's, it's, you're doing good. I love it. Yeah, good so you know what? I just, I know I went to school. And I We had some places that were not as savory. <laughs> <laughs> like family has lived in those neighborhoods and things like that. And I know how to carry myself. I know how to, how to switch it on and off. That was an experience that I didn't know when someone t took my phone. It was not, I didn't be like, yeah, here you go. You can use it to call who, I didn't do that. It was stolen <laughs> right out of my hands, yes, but it was <laughs> stolen and very traumatizing. It was, I, I was just like literally in disbelief from the moment it happened. I literally looked at my friend who was with me and I'm like, did they just take my phone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so backstory. She was riding a bus, public transportation from school, and somebody stole her phone. Yeah, and they were, and I didn't know they were like 
getting the rundown, plotting the whole time. They're like, yeah, so what phone is that? I'm like, oh, this is the iPhone Siri. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. oh, okay, that, that got to this. I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this that then they bus stop came and it was like, whoop, and they ran off the bus and I'm like, did they just take my phone? <laughs> and my friend like, yeah, girl, come on, and we jumped off the bus, call ourselves chasing them, and then they turned it to an alley. I said, oh, honey, you can have it. <laughs> I said, don't worry about it. I stopped her because she like, no, we going. I'm like, mm, I'm not chasing them back in no alley for no dag. Let me hold your phone. I'm gonna call my mother. <laughs> Mom, this happened. Blah, blah blah blah. She called my dad. By the time I got home, I had a new phone. <laughs> Wasn't an iPhone, but I had a phone. <sighs> so it was not worth my life. More Y'all wait story. for her book. <laughs> she has a lot of stories like that. Yeah, I was. I'm blessed. <laughs> as long as you know, I am. As long as you know, I am. I am blessed. Yeah. <laughs> but no, back to relationship though. I feel like sometimes it's the how blessed and like the way that you and dad and like the village and the family like took care of me. I do see in like other people that I've met and have had like relationships with like almost like a small like envy like because they were not raised that way or they cannot relate to like at the most minor inconvenience I can call my mother or my father and it's like taken care of (laughs) like Mm. they don't have that relationship with they haven't experienced that so it's like even as an adult like I can count on my parents to help me get from this to this if this is what I want to do when I've shown like okay I want to do this I need help with this or I can count on my parents to do that for me and everyone doesn't have that like and so I do know like I'm just blessed all around because people don't don't have that yeah but it it is a blessing but it doesn't mean that the person that doesn't have that aren't blessed no they are they are it's just just a different different Mm -hmm. type of blessed but just speaking on that like specifically because like i am an adult and some some of my friends their parents have stopped doing things for them as soon as they turn 18. Mm-hmm. Or... i threaten you every day mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm gonna do it one day cut you off off o f f when i have a grandbaby don't rush. That's when you're going to cut me off. That's when mm-hmm. I'll become chopped liver once I bring a, a, a grandbaby in here. Because then it's going to be like later with you. What's what's my grandchild doing? But until then, I mean, I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the holiday season. And not sizing up blessings. Just we all are blessed, you know. And the season is really about giving. Mm-hmm. You give love. You know, a song, Give Love on Christmas Day. Yes. You really give love. And you don't have to just give it on Christmas. No. Right? So giving love is very important in our family. And I think all that what we talked about as far as, like, creating the vibe for Christmas and going out, doing the Christmas shopping and everything, it's really a way to give love. Yeah. And you don't have to give love monetarily. You can give love be a time Mm -hmm. you know and that's a conversation or you just want to hang out with someone or you know whatever or you could go to church and serve um on any type of organization that would help needy families um or donate to salvation army Uh, there's a lot of ways to give love yeah and and you can show like you said love in in different ways spending time and things like that but speaking of that though there is something like a new tradition that I want to start sort okay. of kind of with like the women in our family. Mm-hmm. I want us to do like a Christmas like shopping kind of thing like where we go whether it be the outlets or New York or like somewhere specifically like every year and we just go together like and do 
the the Christmas shopping kind of thing together. That's spending love, creating the holiday cheer, and to build some strength in relationships. If that's something that we do, that's something you could be. I look think forward that to. would be fun. I have a memory, a childhood memory. Um, actually, um, when I was younger, I would probably say, hmm, maybe ten around that age on up to teenage years at Mondawmin Mall there used to be I don't know if it was a Murphy's or a Woolworth but we would like we practiced our coins every day we would put them in the bank so around Christmas time we would get to dump the bank out and wrote, cash the money in. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Nano, whoever would give us money and we would have like $20, $30 and we would all go like me, Uncle Mooch and you know, all of the people in my group, um, we would go to the Smurfies or Woolworths and we would have like $25, $30 and we would shop and we would buy everybody something in the Murphys mm -hmm. for Christmas. So That's cool. yeah, that was fun and it, it does, have I mean you you can build up to it you know everybody don't have a lot of money laying around yeah. so even if throughout the whole year you just tuck a dollar aside and you know we pick one day and say we're going together as a family to shop I think that would be fun because I do remember how fun it was back then yeah because you know this you went last year for New Year's to Jamaica right mm -hmm. so this is a, would be the second year mm -hmm. so that's not something that everybody in the family can do mm -hmm. like for the holiday kind of thing so like i think the leading up to christmas or yeah something we can like go that. to breakfast and then yeah, we can just hit the road we can go shopping somewhere yeah that'd be Spend cool some time. yeah that would only be cool. the girls though well the whole family is girls anyway <laughs> pretty much <laughs> women yeah so you got to get married and get busy give me my grandson <laughs> hanging out with the family is fun it is fun, but I'm just trying to go back to giving love and I'm just thinking, you know, there are people that just may want to give, give love. I mean, I... No, Shawnee. You sound like you was trying, so... Yeah, I was stretching. I know. Yeah, I think that that one's hard because it's like, you don't really want to fake don't the stop. funk. Yes, you do. How do you give love on Christmas if you have nothing to give? Mm. All right, you're not. How do you give love on Christmas if you don't have love to give or anything to give? Well, thank you. Well, what do you mean you don't have love to give? Let me, <laughs> how, yeah, because it's when you don't have anything to give. How do you give, how do you give on Christmas if you don't have anything to give? Spending time with your family and loved ones or like you know just I think you have to be creative of course but there are things that you can do like you have children or you're spending time with if you don't have children you can have like nieces or nephews spending that time with them for instance when the parents need to go out and do the shopping or things like that and baking cookies or you know things like that helping them make a gift for their mom or dad to get to give to their mom like those kinds of things are how you you know you can give love and spend quality time with those people that you care about that's giving on christmas that's showing love mm -hmm. now i'm gonna play devil's advocate because what i said could be taken two ways the way you answered it but then there's a person who's just flat out tired out there life just been life in mm -hmm. and they are at their wits end and they feel like they have nothing to give and for that person I personally because I remember a time and space where I visited that area I would suggest that they would force themselves to be with a, a, a different put themselves in a different atmosphere and maybe be with um, another family or force themselves just to, to go out and experience the various things that are available to celebrate the holiday. Mm -hmm. Would you have anything to add to that? Um, I think, you know, getting close up with a friend who mm -hmm. still who whose family still does the, the whole holiday workup and things like that, that could help you just not sit in it. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Because that's important to not just sit in it. You do have to force yourself sometimes to like get out of the rut. Like you, because if you sit in it, it'll consume you and you won't ever, you know, like see the light, see the light or progress. You, You do have to like take that step to like force yourself at some point. And of course, when you first get there or if you first doing it, it's gonna be uncomfortable. But once you lean into it, you'll find yourself like being okay, mm-hmm. at least for that moment. Yeah, but you have to put in the work. Yeah. You know? It's easy to sulk and sit in. Mm-hmm. For me, it was. And, you know, I was blessed in that I had a village to reach in and say, hey, you know, I haven't heard from you in a couple of days. What you doing over there? Because mm-hmm. you did speak about a period of time where I was unemployed. And it was really hard for me, especially being the independent person that I am and have always been. Um, it was hard to depend on an unemployment check mm-hmm. because it's not equivalent to a regular check. and. You're accustomed to a way of living and you have to pivot. And in my circumstance, I had to do all of that and not let my child know because the last thing I would want to do is have you worry. And um, it's a lot. So in that scenario, I had nothing to give because I was tired and I was tired of getting the thanks but no thanks for the job interviews and Um, I was tired of just being tired. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I had to force myself. You know, people would reach out to me and say, hey, it's not about money. Just come on. You know, let's go for a walk. Let's go to the movies or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. No, but mom, although you say like you didn't have like anything to give in in those moments or those times, I want to just say like you did give, though. And like I said earlier, one, I didn't know we were going through a hardship. So that was excellent on your job, on your <laughs> end, because I had no idea. And then, you know, we we spent time. We did things creative also. I, re- I don't know if this was that during that time, but I do remember one time when we were like powerless in the house and you made it a game <laughs> and we spent time together and I just thought we was doing something new or spending time together. So you did give, you you never stopped like pouring into me. <laughs> you did show me love. We had, we had a, a great like household dynamic. So through it all, throughout the good times and the bad times, there was love. A lot of it. It was. It was. And there are great memories. And I would encourage others, whether it would be in a family situation, a single situation, or what have you, hold on to love. Because that's the most encouraging thing that we have. And particularly during Christmas. Go out of your way to give love to someone. You going to do it? I would, you know what I would say, the person, I'm not going to say like and not like, because I think that's petty. People that you don't typically associate with, go out of your way to do something special for them. I think we should have a challenge. Okay. You think you could do that? Yeah. I could do that. What'd I just say? You said somebody who you don't particularly, you know, hang with on a regular or, you know, spend time with or care for. I don't know what word we use, <laughs> <laughs> but go out of your way to do something nice for them. And I think it will make you feel so good. You think so? I do. <laughs> do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe that Christmas is all about giving, all about love and showing love, not receiving. I believe that love will carry you through the holiday season and just plain out life. What do you believe? I believe that I have the best mother on the planet. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That's my baby. That's my mini me for those of you who don't know it already. But she is. 
Kayla Rashawn, I am so thankful to you for agreeing to come. I know this is not your jam, but you agreed to sit down with me and spend this hour, hour and a half, or however long it is, y'all, with me. But we have fun. And the most important thing is to realize that family is important. Showing love is important and just having fun with it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, Sean Monet, Hidden Parts, the podcast. Follow, like, share, subscribe, but come back. Hi, friends. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. Please remember to subscribe, follow, like, and share. You can also find out more about us, the Hidden Parts podcast, as well as watch this recording and many others at my website, www.the-inner.me. Bye.